Well, good evening, my beautifully blessed people, and welcome back. Welcome back. Hello, everybody. I pray that all is well with each and every one of you, and that you all are having a wonderful and an enjoyable evening, as well as you've had a blessed day today. That's right. So welcome back to my channel. For those of you, this is your first time joining. I am DeCarlo Turner, and this is my channel. That's right. So I bring messages that the Lord has given to me to share with many of you who are seeking uh a word from the Lord, and for those of you who need to have reassurance that God has not forgotten about you, and to God be all the glory, praise, and honor for all the things that he has done and all the things that he's going to do in each and every one of our lives. All right, so listen, I would like to say to each and every one of you who are, who are new subscribers, welcome, welcome to the family, welcome to my channel, and thank you so much, you guys, we're over 4,000 in subscriptions, so those of you who are, have just joined, thank you so much, thank you, because apparently the word is getting out by some of my favorite people, and they are my current subscribers, hey everybody, how y'all doing, so thank you all so much for getting the word out there and sharing these videos with family friends and co-workers as well as associates or anyone who you believe needs to have a word. I've been receiving a lot of emails from a lot of you regarding some of the things that you've been going through and so the Lord has placed some things up on my heart to talk about a lot of your situations and then I'm going to expound on some things myself as it relates to how these things are going to be able to help you and how you need to have a clear concise picture as to what people are really doing and how they are behaving as well as the word of God and what God says, how he's going to deal with these people. All right. So today's title of this message is they've been exposed. That's right. But before we begin, as always, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you thanking me for another opportunity to speak as a vessel for your people as well as those who don't know you and the pardon of their sins. Lord, I decrease and as you increase, I pray, Lord, that your word will go forth and reach as many people as you have ordained for it to reach. I pray, Lord, that you allow the hearts and minds of people to be open to receive this message. I pray against any manner of evil, nor any plague that comes nigh our dwelling, that it be bound in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for not only just me, but for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that you give a word that someone will be able to take with them and that they know that you are still there, that you have never left them nor forsaken them. I ask, God, that you send your Holy Spirit and that I welcome your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Fill this atmosphere with your presence and take residence within me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, I pray that you raise your mighty hand in our favor. I pray for divine wisdom and divine discernment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, I thank you and I pray. Amen. All right, wonderful people, let's get to it. I have a lot of material. A lot a lot of material to cover. So I'm going to be having some scriptures. So for a lot of you, you have been asking uh, for scriptures to be referenced. Well, there's a description box on my channel on at each video. So you can go to the description box. Now, as I told someone uh, earlier today uh, in an email, there, if you do not see a scripture, that is because it is straight prophecy. Meaning if I'm reading words, because sometimes when the Lord gives us a lot to, 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 to relate to everyone, we can't remember it all. So we have to write it down. So if for some reason I'm talking and I'm reading something, these are words that the Lord has given to me at a, at, at a pre, earlier prior to this video or prior to the videos, it's simply because God does not repeat his own word. In scripture. So he's not going to say reference scripture such and such. He's just going to give us the words to say to you. So I want to make that perfectly clear. All right. So at any rate, let's begin. They've been exposed. Many of you, my goodness, you all are going through so much with these people who have left you, who have treated you badly, even co-workers. 
I've been getting a lot about supervisors and, 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 and people on the jobs who have been talking about people, dragging people's names through the mud. Same thing with people going through divorces, spouses just up and just leaving people high and dry. And even not even spouses, even just individual people, just leaving people high and dry. People haven't even heard from them. When I tell you, not only have you been through it, but Ms. D has been through it too. Ms. Carla has been through it too. So this is going to be very good because the Lord has given me a very powerful message to let you all know that he is about to do something. I know you guys hear that so many times on so many different platforms, but trust me, this time they will not escape. There have been times where the Lord has allowed these people to have an opportunity. He's given them an opportunity to come clean with you to make right with you, to do right by you. And they refuse to do that. Even still, the Lord has still given them a chance. He's given them an opportunity to not only come clean, but he's given them an opportunity to repent. Well, guess what? This is the year where our God is not going to be tolerating that anymore. God is getting ready to raise his hand in your favor. He is going to avenge you for the times that you have been afflicted and the times that you have been offended those who have caused an offense to you and who have caused harm to you are going to have to pay a very hefty price. Now, some of these people will be able to recover at a later time, but they must go through what they have to go through because God has to show them that it is hands off when it comes to you. These people think that it is a joke that they can keep doing what they're doing, going from place to place, relationship to relationship, leaving nasty little things, these filthy little spirits, and they think that they're getting away with it. You know, people just playing, just sometimes they're just dumb. <laughs> I just have to say it. They actually think that because nothing has happened and that they lift up this little, you know, this little prayer, this, this fake prayer, like the fake that they are, they think that because nothing has happened, God has forgiven them. Well, honey, let me let you know something. They are sadly mistaken because this is the year where God is giving back to his people what has been st stolen, what has been taken, and God is angry. When I tell you he is angry, God is so angry that at the end of this message, I'm going to read to you what God gave to me. The reason why it had taken me so long to come on, because some of you, I had written through an email to let you know to turn the notification bell on, even on my platform, that I would be coming on within the hour. Well, I, unfortunately, I couldn't do that because God was not finished with the information that he had given to me. Now, some of this information I'm about to share with you in this word, some of this is me speaking as an individual, all right? Now, I want you to be prepared because this message is probably going to be one of the most powerful messages that the Lord has given to me. Not to say that other messages have not been powerful, but this one is going to cut to the core, is going to cut to the marrow, It's going to cut like a two-edged sword for people who have done you wrong, all right? Let's start with the first one. Again, the title of this message is They've Been Exposed. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 11 through 14. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whosoever doth make it manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake, thou hast sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Give me one second. I got to take a sip here. What the Lord is saying is this don't have any fellowship with people who have unfruitful works. Don't have any fellowship with these people. Anybody who is of darkness, don't have any fellowship with them. Because according to the word of God, the Lord is saying, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Meaning, 
they are being exposed, all right? But all things that are reproved are made manifest by light. The cover is being pulled off a lot of these people. A lot of these little tricky people thinking they're doing something. Oh, yeah, they are. They really messing up with God. They think they're hurting you. They making God really angry. Let's go a little bit further. As it relates to people spewing lies out of their mouths, like you heard me on the video yesterday, telling half-truths. If they're telling a story and they are omitting certain things, it is a lie. A lot of these people are very deceptive. So here's what the Word of God says about that. This scripture is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 17, and it reads as follows. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. All right. Here's what that means. People who do you wrong, <laughs> who literally do you wrong and just plain dirty. They have no idea what they have done. I have had emails from people saying that someone has left them. They had no idea that they were going to do it. Then I've had others that have said that they left. They haven't heard not one word from them. These people don't, they don't care. Then I've also had others tell me that they found out that these people are leading a double life. These people have planned everything. These people went and bought stuff, set up a whole nother household. <laughs> I kid you not, this is going on. Then I have the other, a lot of you, uh, uh, other of you who have also shared with me about your jobs. Many of you have been terminated, wrongfully terminated from your jobs because people have lied on you. People have literally set you up for failure. But let me let you know how God feels about that. I'm going to give you an example. People who do the following, dishonest business practices, gossip, greed, and laziness steal from you, secretly planning things, and as a result have betrayed you, these things in the eyes of God are all condemned as immoral and dangerous, all right? These people have no idea. They think that their evil and wicked ways sneaking behind your back, slithering in your life, slithering their way in your life, and slithering their way out of your life they think that they will not be, they, they think that they won't go unpunished. Some of these have no idea that they can literally be locked up for what they've done because some of these people have taken money from you. Like you heard me say yesterday, some of these people have mixed their money with yours, got you thinking that they're doing something for you. Next thing you do, you look in your bank account. Guess what? They've used yours too. When I tell you, I know that all too well. And many of you know that as well. Many of you have children that these people have left you. They left you high and dry. Many of you have no idea what the next hour is going to bring. Many of you, as you see, the temperatures are changing. There are many of you don't even have a place to lay your head. And these people have left you. Well, I'm here to let you know God sees it all and he is going to deal with them. These people run and they hide. They take advantage of you and they defraud you. And they forget in a little while, they're not only going to, now that they've been exposed, eventually they're going to get caught. So if people are out there treating you like that, just, I'm here to let you know, some of these people are actually going to end up in jail. Some of them in prison because of the things that they have done. They've taken advantage. There's some people in this world you just can't take advantage of, especially like if you got somebody who has children, people have a certain dollar amount that they depend on for their livelihood. People can't, need to be careful how they handle you about your money. People need to be careful of trying to be slick and clever and slithering money out of your bank account, trying to make you believe they're helping you and, 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 then, you, and then they're not. Then you have these other types of people. These are con men and con women. These are con artists. This is what they do. They're very clever at what they do. They're good at trying to get you to believe that their soul want to help you so bad. And these people are doing nothing but watching and counting your pockets. They look to see, here's how you know. 
when you come into some money, whether it's large or small, I don't care if it's $100, $500, 3000 or 20000 watch how they behave. All of a sudden, they got to buy something. They got to find something to do. But they act like they're helping you when, in fact, they're not helping you. Matter of fact, they'll even put money with yours. And next thing you know, they're lying about what they need money for. This is what these people do. These people are just as stupid and as wild as a boar because they have no idea. See, you're going to be restored. The things that they've taken from you, and they've stolen from you because God looks at their heart. He sees their heart. He sees that they have ill intent. God sees that they are deceptive. They're evil and they're wicked. And these people scheme. They prey on other people. God is tired of it and he's getting ready to do something about it. All right. Now, when they realize that you are starting to figure them out because you start asking questions, now they want to run. Now they want to disappear. All right. And this is what they do. They always run. Be it emotionally, they get you all emotionally wrapped up in them. And then, and sometimes physical, this happens. And they take from good-hearted, loving people who will give them the shirt off their back. But they're so cold-hearted and so callous and, and, and so devious and, 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 and manipulative about the things that they do. They don't even care. It becomes a routine to them. Some of you have housed these people. You've fed them. You've clothed them. You treated them with the love of Christ. You've done this. And what did they do? They lied about their feelings to you. Knowing all the time they never loved you. They're still in love with somebody else who's moved on with their life. But they're trying to compensate for it by getting you tricked and fooled and getting you all wrapped up. And once they see that they got you, then the game begins. And they know that they've lied about their feelings and have even lied about their circumstances. They fabricated stories, making it seem as though the person before you did them so wrong when in fact they're actually describing themselves. I know somebody saying, Ms. DiCarlo, yes, oh, trust me. When I tell you, <laughs> I know, all right? And this is what they do. They go from place to place, relationship to relationship, leaving threads of their toxic behavior behind. And some will even give you false hope. This is what a lot of them, a lot of them will do, especially ones that you have, that you allow to come into your house. This is what they do. They'll actually, knowing that they're going to leave you, they're planning, you know, this, this, they've got all this whole strategy. They got you all wrapped up and all of a sudden, surprise, bing, I got to go. But this is what they do. They give you false hope. They got you thinking that they're going to come back, knowing that they're going somewhere else to start a whole nother life victimizing the next person. So what do they do? They leave behind their clothes, items, and personal belongings, knowing that they're going to live a double life somewhere else, knowing that they are not returning. This is what they do. Now, some of you have worked your behinds off making these people very comfortable and accommodating them while sacrificing and accommodating them doing all this and you find out it was only a lie. You know, it's really bad to do that because everybody ain't saved. See, some of these people, they think that when they do you this way, that you drop these tears, they don't understand what's behind the tears. There are some people, God will not allow them to go forward to take revenge, but then there's some people, like I just said, Everybody ain't saved. So just like they got a game, it's still people out here that got game better than them. They just don't know. See, they see you. Even if you tell them about your past, these people still don't, don't believe it. <laughs> they think that they can just do what they want to do and keep going from place to place, person to person, stealing, playing with people's minds, toying with people's hearts and their emotions and thinking that they have gotten away. Well, one thing I know for sure, everybody don't play that. Now, there's some of us, we save. Some of us, we, baby, when I tell you we got a pass, people on this, on my platform who are subscribers, who, who know me from my past, trust me, they already know. But thank God for his grace. Thank God for his saving grace. I don't have that in me anymore. And that's good for them. 
but there's some of you, you're not there yet. I think I had one of my subscribers, she said to me, she said she wanted to lay hands on this person, but she wanted to be real cool about it. I'm just paraphrasing what, what she said. There's some people, people will, people will cause harm to you. And as a matter of fact, if they say something to the people that care about them, a lot of times they don't have to do nothing. It's other people that care about them, that it angers them, that you did them that way. So that they did you that way. So people need to be careful. Everybody is not saved. You cannot run anywhere and hide from anybody. And you especially can't hide from God. It may take a person a minute to find out where this person is or these people are, what they've done. But at the end of the day, if somebody really want to find you, they can find you. You all know that. So these people out here playing these games, <laughs> thinking that they run somewhere and hide. Baby, some of them run to a whole different state. I've had that happen to me. They think can't nobody find them. Right. Don't know who nobody know. Right. Look, some of us have connections to people. I've spent 40 some, almost 50 years in government. If I want to find somebody, I can find them. Matter of fact, I've got law enforcement officials that are on my channel. All right. And trust me, and they always watching, they're always listening. So if people think that they doing something, getting away with something, they ain't getting away with nothing. Sometimes you have people in places that care about you, that even like you, that you don't even know. So like we used to say back in the day in the shy, baby, sometimes you got people that you don't even know that you have people. And that's how that is. So again, these people need to be careful about what they do because they leave a trail everywhere they go. You can't go and, and pop an ATM card and don't nobody know where you're at. You can't even pick up a telephone. You can turn it off, but guess what? There's always something, a pie in the sky, just like the eye in the sky. It's called a satellite. And that satellite is controlled by somebody. So if somebody, again, really want to find them, they can be found. This is how stupid people are, right? See, it is bad to do people wrong who have been kind and many of you have been so kind to these people. As I am speaking at this with this message right now, there are so many of you, tears are streaming down your face. I can, when I tell you, I feel it. I can feel it. And you all are crying a stream of tears because you feel like a fool that they have used you. But guess what? You don't have to feel like a fool. You know how you should be feeling? You should be, those tears should be tears of joy. Thanking the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for saving me from a disaster because you don't know what these people have done. God, thank you for loving me so much that you saved me. Does it hurt? Of course it hurts. Anytime you spend any time with a person, especially when you've come to love that person or have fallen in love with that person and they do you dirty, that is hurtful. It makes you so angry that it's some people can't handle, they can't handle that hurt. They go into a rage and it doesn't matter if it's male or female. Sometimes I get people that talk and they say, you know, this, you know, there should be a message about the men doing the women. Baby, let me tell you something. I wrote a book. It's called A Forgotten Man. That book talks about how good men are deceived and mistreated and taken advantage of by certain types of women. It's called The Forgotten Man. It's on Amazon. So it's not just men doing women like that. You got women just as ruthless and dirty and low down and, and, and slithery as a man. So you can't say that it's predominantly men. It's just that the men get more exposure for what they do. You have to also admit that there are women out here just as bad as men. So it, it goes both ways. It happens on both sides. All right. Now, many of you have been dealing with some things on a job. Whew, my goodness. It's so, it's, it's, it's people on jobs. You know, when people do you dirty on a job, to me, it takes a lot of nerve and a lot of audacity for people to do you like that. You know why? Because they are messing with your livelihood. 
Some of you have worked for years and years, and some of you have these have have such beautiful gifts inside of you, and some of you are so skilled and talented, and you got these lizards doing what they do to you. That's why I'm so glad I don't work for nobody. Thank you, Jesus. And some of you, it's going to get to that point where you're not going to be able to work for anybody. Here's what I tell people. If you keep working on these jobs and you're doing your job and people are treating you like dirt, sometimes God does not want you to be there. He just needs you to get what you need to get before it gets worse, where you won't be terminated, where you can walk out under your own power through the power of God. Sometimes God just wants you to get enough so you can get to where you need to get to, to the next phase. Now, some people have to go through different levels of doing that. Meaning you, when you have a gift, you're a chosen child of God, you don't have no business work for nobody. Uh -uh. And I'm not encouraging anybody to just stop and drop and quit their work. I'm not encouraging that. What I'm saying is this, pay very close attention to what's happening. You're giving stuff away, giving your information away. You're being a, a, you're being very good at what you do. And all of a sudden, they got your name caught up in some mess. These dirty little lizards, because that's all they are, right? Matter of fact, I'm going to put it better than that. They're lower than a snake's belly. You can't get no lower than that, all right? And that's what they do. But I'm going to read a little bit more about how I personally describe those types of people. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's actually written in my book somewhere in there when I described about uh, uh, people uh, uh, going through things with their bosses. And this is similar too. all right. Again, they've been exposed. Here's what happens. You got people who are doing the things that they're doing, treating you bad on your job. These people are looking to score real big with your bosses. How dumb can they be? You got the lookout person. That's the person who's looking to score browning points with your boss, taking you down because you are. They're intimidated by you. They're threatened by you. They're threatened by your skill. They're threatened by your knowledge. They're threatened by your experience. I don't care if you don't have a degree. Listen to me. Some of you all got experience that will tear a degree, leave it in the smoke, honey. You know how I know that's true? Because I don't have one. See, I was able, God blessed me and gave me knowledge where I had 13, 13 state certifications and I made 40 something to 50 some thousand dollars or more a year than the people who had degrees, master's degrees. Some of these people didn't even know how to put together a simple paragraph and speak eloquently, but God gave that to me. I worked harder for it, but I did it. So it gave me what I needed because I trusted in God wholeheartedly. God gave me the knowledge that I needed to be able to do my jobs. All right. I didn't, what I went to college for, it didn't have anything to do with the profession that I actually was successful in. So what I'm saying to you, don't let these people with these master degrees and, and, and these PhDs talk down to you. Cause again, and I'm not taking anything away from people who have that. God bless any and everybody who has gone to school and worked their behinds off, created a huge amount of debt so that they can be where they felt they needed to be in life. But there are people who are still smarter than those people. And those people have what is called divine wisdom. They have divine favor. God has given them something divinely. They are gifted people. And most of your people who are highly successful, who are gazillionaires, a lot of them don't even have a college degree. They have honorary degrees, honorary doctorates. Think about that, all right, now. Let's talk about the brown noser, all right? The yes man or the yes girl, a boss pleaser, AKA the brown noser. And they too stupid to realize that they don't even deserve, nor will they get to be respected by the boss. The boss is just using them to get what he or she needs to have from them. These people, 
These people so stupid. They have a capital S on their forehead that represents stupid. And these people are a complete sellout. These people on your, on your job, the brown nosers, I got to break it down for you. These people are wearing out their knee pads. They are wearing out the term that's called brown nosers because every time you see them, they headed to the boss's office telling something on you. Rat-a-tat-tat, there they go. <laughs> Talking about you with a brand new pair of knee pads. I'm being this way because this needs to be told this way. Because see, everybody don't get the biblical scripture. So there are times where I got to break this down. That's right. This 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 needs to be broken down so that you know the type of people that you're really dealing with. And because these people who are always head to the boss's office with the knee pads, you know, they go there so much, they, they got to have they just got to have a whole new set of knee pads. And because they've been in the boss's office so much about you literally wearing out the knee pads, it's like again. They not only have to have a new pair, but guess what? They get ready to perform an act that they have no idea how great the sin is by them doing what they're doing because of all the mess that they have on them for making things miserable for you. Don't know what they're doing. This is what they're doing. So you know what? Let me, let me, let me just describe it. I got to say it. Let me describe the role of a brown noser. I need to make this plain so you can pick up what I'm about to put down. That's why I want to say that. All right. Now, I want you to picture this with these brown nosers. These brown nosers got their noses so far up their bosses behind that they need a chisel and a mallet to get the manure off of their noses. Let me say that again. They've got their noses while they're on their knee pads. Got it? Got it. I know. You, there you go. I got. I know you got it. Okay. So far up their bosses behinds, telling on you, lying on you, making up these frivolous complaints about you, and these people are believing. These bosses are believing them. They want you out the way so bad. These brown nosers, that they got their noses so far up their bosses behinds, that they need to have a chisel will a mallet to get all the manure off of their faces and off of their noses. Matter of fact, some of them so deep up into their boss's behinds, gee, Lord have mercy. Ah, some of them are so deep up into their boss's behinds, honey, that they need to have, the, the chisel does, a mallet won't work. They need to have a jackhammer. And I mean that because there is no reason why you have worked the way that you have worked. You are tired. You have been exhausted. You have been given your ideas. You have been a team player and these people treat you like dirt. Guess what? God got something special for them because all that manure that they have on their face is nothing but filth. And in the eyes of God, he hates it because it is a form of abuse. It's a form of discord. They're going to tell lies on you and spewing lies so that people can feel differently about you, causing you to react. They're creating chaos. That's called discord and God hates it. So this is what he going to do. He got something real special for them because see, little do they know they mess with the wrong one. You are a person who really loves the Lord. All you're trying to do is do what's right. Do right by people. Do right by God. You want to be, you are trying to do everything that you can possibly and humanly do according to the word of God. All right. What they're doing to you is not right. It's not fair. Many of you have been terminated for no reason. None. And some of you are sitting there scratching your head like, what, what happened? And he, he, look, if some of these bosses sat in your face and told you you would be okay and nothing to worry about, guess what? God going to get them too. He's got some for them too. Anybody who had a hand in you being let go from your job, you being stopped for a promotion, you being given work overloaded when other people sitting on, be, on their behinds, taking extra breaks, disappearing, have come to work. You can't even get sick or you can't even go take care of your kids without somebody trying to write you up. But the teacher, but the boss's pet don't have that problem, right? Because most of these people can't figure out how they want to work anyway. 
Because most of them, most of the time, with what they're doing on their jobs, a lot of these supervisors aren't even qualified to do the job. But they'll call you to help them, the person who's not qualified. You tell them the procedures, the policies, the, 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 the things that they need to, to know to just to do their job as a supervisor. And you're like, how do they get that job? I'm doing their job. I, I got to show them. But they don't want to pay you nothing extra if you have to train one of them. Again, God sees all of that. And he's tired of it. and He's getting ready to fix it. And let me tell you, when it comes to them being exposed and them treating you the way that they're treating you, God will repay them for what they have done. Let me read to you Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter, um, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves but rather give place to wrath for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. When I tell you the Lord is going to repay them, he's going to repay them. I'm going to read something else to you. Give me one second here. I want to read to you uh, what the Lord says about, what the Bible says about uh, um, God's wrath. The fury of God's wrath. That's what I want to say. That's what I'd like to say. And that's in Job, the 20th chapter, verses 12 through 29. I'm going to read this. And I want you to you guys to really take note of this because this is really important. This is how angry God becomes when people are doing you the way that they're doing you. When they have been exposed, like the Lord says, people say, you're not supposed to talk about people. You just heard it. The Bible says you are. They're supposed to be called out. They're supposed to be brought to the light, right? This little stuff they're doing in secret, right? It's being exposed and this is the year for it. But let me let you know something. Like I said earlier in this message, God is getting ready to deal with these people. His fierce wrath is coming upon them. And here, according to Job chapter 20, verses 12 through 29, they read as follows. So follow me. All right. I'm reading the new Inter international version, the NIV version. Though evil is sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his tongue, though he cannot bear to let it go and lets it linger in his mouth. Yet his food will turn sour in his stomach. It will become the venom of serpents within him. He will spit out the riches he swallowed. God will make his stomach vomit them up. He will suck the poison of serpents. The fangs of an adder will kill him. He will not enjoy the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and cream. What he toiled for, he must give back uneaten. He will not enjoy the profit from his trading for he has oppressed the poor and left them destitute. He has seized houses he did not build. Surely he will have no respite, no respite from his craving. He cannot save himself by his treasure. Nothing is left for him to devour. His prosperity will not endure. In the midst of his plenty, distress will overtake him. The full force of misery will come upon him. When he has filled his belly, God will vent his burning anger against him and rain down his, blow, rain down his blows on him. Though he flees from an iron weapon, a bronze tipped arrow pierces him. He pulls it out of his back, the gleaming point out of his liver. Terrors will come over him. Total darkness lies in wait for his treasures. A fire unfanned will consume him and devour what is left in his tent. The heavens will expose his guilt. The earth will rise up against him. A flood will carry off his house, rushing waters on the day of the Lord's wrath. Such is the fate God allots the wicked, the heritage appointed for them by God. There you have it. That is God's fury. This is the fire <laughs> fury of God's wrath. When I tell you God's wrath is a fierce fire, you just heard it. That is Job chapter 20 verses 12 through 29. You don't have to believe Mr. Carlo. Read it for yourself. All right. Listen, 
I want to encourage each and every one of you. I know some of you are still crying. Listen to me. It's going to be all right. God is going to open up a way, a passage for you to be delivered. It doesn't seem like it right now. I know some of you may be living in your car. Some of you may be living in places that you totally despise, but trust me, God is going to open up a way. There's nothing too hard for God. When I tell you, if he can do it for me, you all, he can do it for you. Just trust him. Just turn everything over to him. Just surrender it all to him. Repent, Lord, please forgive me. I for you have to forgive the people who have treated you wrong, who have mistreated you. You have to forgive them. It is, is it going to be hard? Of course, it's going to be hard. But I'm going to tell you something. When you forgive them, the Lord will forgive you, all right? The Lord will forgive you. God will forgive you. That's the beginning of your deliverance. And so when you forgive them and you turn them over to God, you said, Lord, forgive me for allowing myself to be exposed to that, whatever that is that you were exposed to, whether it's immoral, sexual immorality, whether it was fornication, adultery, uh, 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 abuse, uh, 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 things that people were doing, bad influence because bad company corrupts good things moral characters. All right. So remember that just know that the Lord is going to fix it. You got to trust the Lord. Some of you, there are people who are watching you. They're paying attention to you. They see your hurt. They see your pain. Some of you are going to be summoned for new opportunities. Yes. Some of you, you looking for these promotions. They haven't happened. Just like I told someone the other day, listen to me, if your promotion is not going forward and it seems like it's stopping, there are several reasons why that's happening. You never know what type of corruption is taking place on that job and God may not want you in that position at that particular time. That's one thing. Not only that, God may have to move some people out of the way so that you can be in the position. Some of you are going to be taking over your own supervisor's positions. Some of you are going to be taking over your own manager's positions. Some of you who have been terminated, those people who have terminated you, they're going to be exposed for the filthy lies that they have told, the trickery, the, the, the misleading things and telling half truths about you. They're going to be exposed and some of you all are going to be taking those positions. Then there's some of you, God is going to elevate you, not on that job, but there's another opportunity that's going to come open for you and it's going to be much better. The atmosphere is going to be more relaxed. You're going to be more in control and God is going to use you as a leader, representative of Christ. He's going to do that so that you can help people who have been under bondage under the previous person. Then there's those of you who will not be able to go back to a regular job because God has something inside of you for you to start your own business. Many of you have been seeking the Lord. You have been praying, but you are afraid. So sometimes God has to allow something to happen to make something happen. So some of you who have been terminated, maybe God is saying to you, now is the time for you to start that business. That may be the answer. All right, well, listen, I thank you all so much for listening and for tuning into my channel. Once again, to my new subscribers, thank you so much for being here. And I welcome you once again to my current subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. My goodness, you guys, you are all amazing. I love you all with the love of Christ. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for the next upcoming video. And on that note, I love you with the love of Christ. And until next time, we'll see you. Bye for now.